yeah, 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 we back. Now, it's going to be a short video. You know, we only got a few pages left. But, yeah, man, I'm very excited about this series, man. I'm very excited, bro. Like I said, if you didn't watch the series from the beginning, go start back on part one. This series was a first-hand written account of the Haitian Revolution from Dessalines' right-hand man, his personal secretary, a young man by the name of General Bontonaire. Man, I'm telling you, this is probably the greatest series I've ever dropped. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to top this one right here, bro. Like, I'm serious. I'm serious, man. Go listen to this from start to finish part one we discussed how the french had just landed in the colony we discussed those first few battles part two we discussed the battle of Kutapiwu. part three we discussed how the french were you know ramping up the atrocities right men women and children all getting drowned hung shot uh, burned alive eaten by dogs etc etc part four was like the big finale you know what i mean part four was the big finale and part five is kind of going to be like the, the the outro right it's going to be the outro so let's jump into it man not wasting no time when French agent Edelville freed Rigo from the obedience he owed Toussaint back in 1799, he knew that this single word would cause civil war and all the misfortunes on our credulous and ambitious heads, free in your turn from the protection that the laws owe to any man that wish they could grant the Frenchman, who will be reckless enough to see again the island which we have sanctified by the sacrifice of what I bore the French name there. Can you ever satisfy the common vengeance? See your cities converted to mourning. See your wastelands. See the cares to which you devoted yourself night and day to revive your campaigns. See your children, your soldiers, the peaceful country dweller, crippled by the French rifle or mutilated by the dagger of the ferocious French soldier who left him only the ear, only the hand from which was not suspended a grain of gold. Hey, the woman who wore on her collar, the token of the memory of a husband. What has become of her and the child who cannot tear from her collar the golden rattle that hung there to present to him his executioner? Where will you find him? And we dare to beg your clemency. No, I too mourn my parents. I urge your fury against everything French. And the criticism of the laws against anyone who recalls or suffers one on the land they have bloodied. Leave the element on which they sail to approach our island. Feast their eyes for a moment on the prosperity it will enjoy under your happy auspices and vomit them against our rocks. Only to expiate our hands the crimes of two centuries. Eternalize the war that we are declaring against them. And at the presence of an armed white man be the signal for war. Haitians, whom the courage of a hero has raised from the anathema of prejudice. By reading these memoirs, you will measure with your eyes the abyss from which he has withdrawn you. And you slaves of all countries, you will learn from this great man that a man naturally carries freedom in his heart and that he holds the keys to freedom within his own hands. And that's it, man. That's the entire book. We read the entire memoirs this week, man. I told y'all. I told y'all, man. I was excited to share this piece of history with y'all. And for those of y'all who haven't seen it, like I said, go to my playlist section. It's in the playlist called The Memoirs. Of Jean-Jacques Dessalines' secretary, written by Bontonet. Check it out, man. Start to finish, part one through five. Listen from start to finish and enjoy yourself. I recommend this book to all black men, regardless of your background, nationality, walk of life. I think all black men would enjoy this piece of literature. I think it's required reading for all black men, all young black boys, all black children. Unfortunately, in our in our educational systems, we do not, you know, read the literature from our ancestors for whatever reason. We go to these Catholic schools, we go to these Christian schools. And they're not going to teach this literature because as you can see, this literature was, you know, very uncensored. This book was very uncensored, man. Bontonet was going in on the Europeans. He was calling the Europeans a bunch of cowards, man. It was just a very uncensored account, a very unfiltered account, a very real account, you know, and they're never going to teach this in school. And the only way that it will be taught in school is if we set our own curriculums to make it happen. So it is what it is. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And like I said before. The purpose of studying history is to understand where you have been so you can understand where you're supposed to go. A large part of the reason why black people don't know what to do, where to go, or what plan to enact to change our situation is because we never take a peek back into the rear view and understand what did our ancestors leave behind. Did they leave any literature for us behind to navigate a path to success in the modern day? Yes, they did. They left a lot for us. They left a lot. But we don't acknowledge it. We don't study it. We don't read it. Unless white people spoon feed it to us, we're never going to go and seek it out on our own, right? Independently. Most of us are not going to do that. And that's unfortunate. And because of that fact, many of us do not know what plan to enact to change our situation, to improve our situation, right? Sometimes you got to take a peek into the rear view to understand what, what is the proper route for you to take right now on the road to success. If more of us studied the literature of our forefathers and our foremothers, not only will we be in a better position today, but we would have a roadmap to navigate to deal with the problems that we are faced with today. We would have more pride, integrity, and dignity as a people if we study the literature and the stories of our forefathers and our foremothers. A large part of the reason why we are the most goofy race on the planet is because we have no idea who we are, where we've been, or where we're supposed to go. 
And when you look at other groups who are in a better position than we are, you understand that they study their ancestors. They institutionalize the literature of their ancestors. They make sure their children are learning about the conquest of their ancestors, the experiences of their ancestors, how their ancestors laid the foundation that got them where they are today. And because they understand where they have been, they understand where they're supposed to go. Like I mentioned in a previous video, by the time a young white kid is 10 years old, he already knows about George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, uh, Paul Revere. You know what I mean? He knows about all them people, James Madison, John Adams. He knows about all of them before he's even in the fifth, sixth grade. Meanwhile, you take the black child, by the, by the time the black child is 10 years old, he don't know shit about shit. He can't tell you not one single thing about his forefathers. He could tell you about the European forefathers, though. The black child could tell you about George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, everybody else, er everything in between. But he cannot tell you shit about his people, his ancestral lineage. He can't tell you anything about his forefathers. And that's the reason why the young black child grows up to be the black adult who doesn't know shit about shit. And then you want to complain about white supremacy. No, no, no. It's not white supremacy's fault that you're not teaching your children what they're supposed to know to arm them with the tools necessary to go out into the world and dominate and succeed. It's not white supremacy's fault that you're not putting your children down, giving them the literature, giving them the knowledge at an early age the same way that other groups do. A lot of times that white supremacy shit is a cop out. It's a cop out because you don't want to put in the work to make sure that your children are well equipped with the knowledge necessary to go out into the world and accomplish great things. You send your kid to the white school to learn the white curriculum and guess what? They grow up and the only thing they can do is solve problems for white people, work for the white corporation and solve problems for the white CEOs. They can't solve problems for their own community because they don't even know what path to take because they don't know who they are or where they have been or where they're supposed to go. And this situation is not unique to just my community, the Haitian community. No, this is every black ethnic group around the world. We are all suffering from the same thing. Every black person from any ethnic group has more knowledge on European history than their own ancestral cultural history. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Go to Nigeria, I guarantee the Nigerians could tell me more about British history than Nigerian history. Go to Senegal, I guarantee the Senegalese people could tell me more about French history than Senegalese history. Go to black America, I guarantee they could tell me more about white American history than black American history. And that's a fact. And how are you ever going to be able to solve your own problems when you can't even, when you don't even know who you are or where you have been or what problems you're supposed to solve? Period, point blank. And a large part of the reason why Haiti is in the situation that it is today, a lot of people like to blame, oh, the French and the Americans. Well, yes, they, yes, they definitely played a role in that. But the real fact of the matter is the average Haitian does not know who the fuck they are. The average Haitian has more of an attachment, has more of an admiration for the God of Israel than they do for their own forefathers that really died for them, that really shed blood for them literally we like their bones are still buried in the soil we could literally go to their grave sites but we have more of an attachment to the god of israel and moses and jesus than we do Dessaline and christophe and Juan Thonne and clairvaux and everybody else who really sacrificed themselves for for our freedom right all those thousands of haitians that drowned in the caribbean sea for us to have freedom today we have more we have more of an attachment to the god of israel than those who sacrificed their life for us and honestly, if you ask me, I think a large part of the reason that we are in the position that we are in today is because a lot of us have turned our back on our ancestors and our ancestors are now punishing us from the ancestral realm. Because when you turn your back on someone who gave the ultimate sacrifice for you, you deserve, you deserve to go through what you're going through today because you are an ungrateful piece of shit. And I say that about my people. When someone lays down their life for you so you can have freedom today and you do not honor them and give them respect every single chance you get, you deserve, you deserve. You deserve to be the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. You deserve to go through what you're going through today because you are an ungrateful piece of shit. And that's why on my channel, my channel is like a shrine. On my channel, I pay tribute to the ancestors because their, their sacrifice never goes unnoticed for me. Never goes unnoticed for me. Y'all can get on your knees and pray to God, but me, I, I pay tribute to the ones who, who really died for me. Really, really, really died for me, for real. For me, specifically. Y'all don't pay tribute. Y'all don't give honor to the ones who deserve it. And that's why, that's why they're giving us spiritual punishment. That's why, that's why. You see, the, the white Americans, they, they pay tribute. They pay tribute to George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Even if they were slave owners, human traffickers, and had no morals, and they were degenerates, they pay tribute to their forefathers who established the prosperity they enjoy today. And until black people from all around the world pay tribute and give honor to the ones that laid down their life for them, we deserve everything that we get. Anyways, man, it's your boy Nefakari Desalene back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm going on. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul.
for your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit, they stuck in the mix. Really, my heart it be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genesis. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Pay for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I can't for the power, they can't for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so elite. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gonna murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.